Hi, welcome to the W1VLF YouTube channel. My name is Paul. This is my first video and I'd like to try and make this video about a topic that I have a lot of interest in or still have a lot of interest in and that is a cylindrical square. Um, not having enough money to really go out and buy a good American made cylindrical square uh, and not want to have to buy an import, I thought, well, maybe I can uh, build up some relatively simple equipment to, uh, to make my own. And so I acquired a surface plate and uh, built a little measuring instrument here that you'll see in a few minutes. Uh, and, but what I really needed was a, a, a well-defined cylinder. And I thought, well, Maybe a, a wrist pin out of a out of a small engine would work, and uh, here's a uh, example of one of those wrist pins. This is from a Ford six-cylinder, 300 cubic inch engine, and it's uh, I don't know about uh, three inches long. There goes the furnace, and about three quarters of an inch in diameter. So uh, highly polished, and I understand the tolerances on these are. Are, uh, are very tight. This one appears to have a little bit of wear, but still didn't seem big enough, um, especially this surface area here, to do what I wanted to do with it. So uh, I went to the local diesel shop and this wrist pin, which is, uh, oh, I don't know, just under, uh, just under four inches long and uh, a little over two inches in diameter seemed like uh, maybe a likely, uh, a likely candidate. And uh, these are also very well polished and I'm assuming uh, the tolerance across the pin is very highly uh, regulated, you know, precision ground. But what I found out is not precision ground is the, uh, the end. Although it is ground, evidently the most important part in the, for this is being used as a wrist pin uh, is this surface and not this, especially in this application where it was a floating pin. Uh, you can see this one came out of cat diesel. I'll zoom in on these after so you can get a really good look at this. Anyway, uh, I'm going to shoot over to the surface plate and my little test jig now and I'll, I'll continue this and I'll uh, give you an example of what I did to take and parallel, or not parallel, but uh, assure that this is 90 degrees to this because right out of the factory or, or with this particular grind it is not. So uh, I'll come back after I set up the, that experiment, okay? Okay, now we're uh, over here at the surface plate, and just a little uh, explanation of what I have here is a federal uh, tense indicator, a piece of uh, steel that uh, has been surface ground on both sides so that it uh, lays nicely against the plate, it doesn't tilt or move about. Well, it slides a little, and that's what this, uh, this V-block is for a little bit of additional weight. And uh, there's a little ledge built right into the front here, and that's so that uh, there's a, a, an actual point of single point of contact uh, on the bottom of the cylinder. And depending on what this face is doing, uh, hopefully it's uh, it's going to be the same all the way around. What I did on both of these, for your viewing pleasure, is um, I, I segmented into quadrants 0, 90, 180, and 270 degrees. Uh, when I first started off, I, I did this in, I think, what, uh, 10 or 20 degree increments all the way around. And, and, um, but typically, uh, I put zero as the lowest reading on the meter. And that's what we're going to shoot for is the, the, the peak, excuse me, the peak reading as I slide past this pin on each one of these at each one of the quadrants so we can see 
just how much it's tilting. And typically, the zero point I started with, and you'll see the zero point on this one as well, was the position uh, where the pin was tilted closest to the indicator. So that was my reference. Okay, so here's a... Um, Here's one that I already ground, and we're going to slide it up against the indicator. Probably going around way too many times, but, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peak it, try to find the highest possible point, and uh, that's somewhere, I guess, like uh, minus half a tenth, so we'll move it back to uh, 90 here, do the same exercise. And what do we have there? Something like 90. I can't really see the, the indicator from up here, so I have to lean over to the side. And now we're going to go to 180. I hate that squeaking. And we're going to try it again. And go back and forth. Okay. So that looks like the peak. Somewhere around the same reading. And we'll go with 270. Do the same thing. Let's see. And it looks like it somewhere. And that's somewhere around the same location. Um, as far as like a half a tenth before the zero. Alright. So I'm going to take this pin, put it off to the side. And this is the factory, factory grind here. But again, I did the same thing. 0, 90, 180, 270. And we're going to put that pin up against here slowly because this one uh, is going to be quite a ways out out of uh, out of uh, out of 90. Let's bring this around. Okay. And now okay. I'm going to move the zero over there. And I can do that pretty easily. Oop, did I tighten it? Let's see. Yeah do that pretty easily. This is very rigid and I wanted it to be, I wanted to make this more rigid than I actually needed. I think um, it makes it a little bit easier. So our reference point is now zero on zero degrees and I'm slowly going to rotate this towards uh, let's say 45 degrees. Okay and when I get to 45, I love that furnace, not quite at 45 yet, I'll peak it up again. So that's about, what, a thousandth or so. And we're going to come up to 90 now. Oops. 90 is about two thousandths off. Not yet. Okay, that's 90 degrees. So now it's about, what, four thousandths off, something like that, four and a half. And I'm going to come up to 180, slowly moving through uh, 90. Now it's like seven tenths off. Not at 180 yet though. Okay, so that's what, nine thousandths off, something like that? Okay, that's the 180. We get it peaked up. And now we'll come around to 170. Excuse me, 270. I'm just going to start to back off, and it probably end up halfway between the zero and uh, nine tenths, something like that. We're almost on 270 now, and here we go. And I'll bring it back. I'm at uh, 300 degrees now. Whoops. Let's see. Yeah. And coming back to zero. Closer. It's about 300 and something degrees, I guess. I'll just go right back to zero. And here's my zero reference point again. And again, I peak it up. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to pull this pin off again and again. And that's the, that's the original one. And here's the modified one. You can see it's a little different on the bottom. And I'll, I'll do this one very quickly once again.
I'm going to just slide this back over to zero back over here. Okay, go to 90. I'm not even looking at the gauge. You know, I'm going to be looking at the gauge after when I edit this together. 180. And 270. Well, I am looking at the gauge, but not directly on, so I can't really tell how close it is. And back to zero. So I hand polished, not hand polished, but hand lapped this one on a small uh, block um, surface plate, another surface plate that I use just for uh, lapping. So uh, if anybody out there uh, can tell me if this is the, the right approach, the wrong approach, uh, what I could do better, what, uh, what, uh, what I'm doing wrong, um, but it sure seems like this, this pin, uh, and actually I did a second one for a friend for him to use, um, just seems like both of these, uh, the pins that I did the hand grind on, um, or the hand lap, uh, are, are pretty darn close. Um, Thanks a lot, and if anybody's interested in how I actually did that in the actual the, the process, um, I'll, I can make another video about that later. Thank you.